Hey, how's it going? Well, I'm working on the locomotives today, so uh, come here and take a look. Well, I hope you can see some detail here, but um, I've got this project I'm working on, and this is a basically angled steel chassis for the locomotive. It's got two main axles and some chain gear drive system, and in the center is a 24 volt motor. Uh, this is a little horn here. It's got a relay and a Siren 50 speed control. So let me show you some of the details of this. So this locomotive is powered by batteries. There's two Group 27 12 volt batteries. They're wired in series to give you 24 volts and it runs a motor that is compatible with 24 volts and then it has a speed controller here a siren 50 and this allows you with small voltages and small currents to control the the high current motor uh, that runs to the wheels it also has a relay that operates the horn basically the horn runs off just 12 volts but it draws a fair amount of current so a relay helps you to switch with small current draw and controlling the horn and that's pretty standard stuff uh, like on your automobile for example so you can see i've been doodling a little bit on this sheet trying to create a circuit diagram roughly for everything that's involved this is the hand control up here this is the relay for the horn. This is the speed controller. And here you can see the high current outputs. These are the low voltage inputs here. We've got our two batteries in series here. There's a little dip switch where you have to set here on the uh, controller, our motor, the horn, and then kind of a color coded system of keeping track on all these wires. Basically, there's seven wires that, that go to the hand control that runs everything. In addition to all these wires would be the wires necessary to monitor the voltage, which I have a little meter, and to apply a battery charger to the system so I don't have to pull the batteries out to get them charged. And then another set of wires that I use to keep a battery tender trickle charger on the system. So there's a there's kind of a small nest of wires going on to keep track of. So this is our 24 volt motor and on the end of the shaft is a sprocket with 15 teeth on it. And that is driven by chain down to a center axle. And then that axle in turn drives the rear axle and the front axle that actually have the wheels on it. And how that works out is this. We don't want a high gear ratio. We actually want a low gear ratio. So we want the motor to turn many times compared to how the wheels turn because that will give us a lot of pulling power not set up for high speed. So this is a 15 tooth sprocket on here and if we wanted we'll say like a one to five gear ratio, the way this works out is about one to 5.4. This sprocket, 15 teeth multiplied by five times would be a huge, large sprocket. We just would not have room for that on the locomotive. But there's sort of a tricky way around that. So this 15 tooth, goes up to 30 teeth here, and that gives us a, a one to two ratio. And then just behind this big sprocket down in here is a, another small sprocket that has 11 teeth on it. And then over here on each axle, there are sprockets that are 30 tooth, same size as this. So when we go one to two, and then we go 11 to 30 and that gives us the same gear ratio as if we had from this 15 tooth all the way up to a large diameter sprocket with uh, 80 or 90 teeth on it. Well let's test out the theory. It's one thing to count all the teeth on the sprocket but we want to put a real world test on this. So I put a little red tape here at the top of the motor shaft. We'll call that top dead center and one piece of red tape on the actual wheel down here. So we'll call that top dead center on the wheel. And I'll spin this around and we'll see 
if we really have that one to five and a half gear ratio that we should have theoretically by counting the sprocket teeth. So top, top, and here we go. There's one, two, and our red tape has vanished over there. Three, four, five, and here comes the red tape over there. Five and a half, or 5.4. Pretty interesting, huh? And we do that without having to have a giant sprocket because we have that reduction sprocket down in here on the center axle. Here's what it looks like with both batteries installed and all the wiring. This harness here is the control cable plus a lot of the charging and monitoring lines and the other wiring going to the front and the back battery. Both batteries are on trickle charges right now and you can see 27.3 volts. Well, I'm going to keep working. Thanks for tagging along and I'll see you next time.